Syed Hashimi here. We're going to talk today about how you can improve your debugging experience in Visual Studio for Mac. So we've got a good amount of content to cover, so let's just get right into it. So I'm going to start off with some, uh, some features which we've recently enabled for .NET Core projects in Visual Studio for Mac. We can see here I've got, a, um, I've got an ASP.NET Core, uh, ASP Core solution loaded here. Uh, it consists of four different projects. Um, I haven't set any breakpoints yet. Let me go ahead and start debugging this application. And then uh, after it gets started, we'll set some breakpoints. All right, so now we can see that the, uh, the website has come up, uh, and it also launched a, uh, a browser for a uh, API project that I have as a part of this solution. So first, what I want to do is um, I want to go and set a breakpoint and then we'll start exploring the different uh, features that we have. Okay, so I've set a breakpoint here inside the create from template uh, function here, and uh, you know this is this is this is a method that I know is going to get hit uh, as as the the default page loads up. So let me go ahead and refresh this page. All right, so now we can see that the the breakpoint has been hit. So now we're on uh, line 84. So let's let's explore some 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 features which have recently been added here. Uh, so one of them is called uh, run the cursor. So let's uh, let's imagine you've got your breakpoint here, and uh, you're you're not really interested in stepping through this double for each loop. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to inspect the result object after that's done. So what you can do is you can right click in your in your code and then say uh, run the cursor. So what that will do is it will execute the code uh, that follows, and then, and then when the when the control reaches that particular part of your code, uh, the debugger will then pause your application, and then you can use the debugger features as you normally would. All right. So now there's there's also a very kind of similar but uh, but different functionality that we have as well that we've recently added. So let's say. Let's say uh, you've been debugging this application and you're, you're currently at line 97. Uh, but what you want to do is you really want to go back to line 84 and then step into create from text. So what you can do is you can right click and then say set next statement. Uh, so this is, and so I've just, I just invoked that and now we can see the debugger is now on line 84. Uh, you know, this might seem like it's kind of similar to run the cursor, but it's very different. Uh, run the cursor will continue execution of your application, and then when it reaches the desired line, it will pause. Uh, set next statement literally sets the next statement to wherever you you've indicated, and there's no code that's being executed uh, in between those two points. So now we can see I can then uh, step into uh, the create from text file and then do whatever debugger operations that I was interested in doing there. All right. So now let's say let's say um, let's say you've been you've been kind of debugging your app and uh, you've you've then kind of explored various different parts of the code and uh, and now you want to go back to where the debugger has stopped. So you can easily do that with the run menu here. So in run, you can go down to show current execution line. So let me invoke that. And then we can see that uh, it's brought us back to the create from text. Uh, method here, and that's where we were uh, kind of paused uh, previously. All right, so now let's move on to some more kind of general uh, debugger features which have uh, which have been supported in, in the product for a long time. So I'm going to open a new um, I'm going to open a different file here and set a new breakpoint. Uh, okay, so this is the the on get method. This is a part of the the website that we recently saw. So let me uh, let me continue the debugger. And then I'll go back to the browser and do a refresh, so that way we can hit that. Uh, hit that. Let's ignore this error for now. That was probably related to my set next statement. All right. Let me turn off this breakpoint and then continue. All right. We can see that we're back uh, to the breakpoint that we've just uh, set up here. If I was to hover over this template packs and expand it, we can see the value of that. Okay, so I've expanded that list, and uh, it's about it's like 235 uh, items here, 
And uh, you can see that the default display here is not, uh, is not really telling me much about the template pack which is being displayed here. What I, what I would like to do is try to modify the code to where I can have a more kind of descriptive string here instead of uh, just the standard uh, two string. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to stop debugging here. And the, the object I want to modify is uh, this template pack. So I'll say go to declaration. And uh, the way that you can do this, you can add an attribute to your code. And that's system diagnostics debugger display. And uh, this, this is actually, uh, I'm using it in a kind of a very basic way here. Uh, so all I'm saying is uh, to display the value for the package property. Uh, we can see that property is defined down here. That's the name of the NuGet package that the template is, is contained in. All right, so let me go ahead and save that. And then uh, we'll, start, um, we'll start debugging one more time and wait for that breakpoint to get hit. All right, now we can see the breakpoint has been hit. Let's go ahead and hover over template packs one more time and then inspect it. OK, so instead of, uh, instead of getting you know, the same string repeated 235 times, now I can go in and I can, I can actually go through and find uh, the item that I want to kind of inspect here. So let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, Mads Christensen. He's got some templates that he's created for .NET New. And then we can go through and then inspect those objects as well if we needed to. All right, so, so I showed you uh, on hover that the uh, debugger display attribute uh, then will show up uh, for on hover. But we can also get that uh, if I were to go into locals and watch window. So let me go into the, the locals window here. And then under this, let's find uh, template packs. OK, I'll drill into template packs. All right, so we can see those, uh, those same strings uh, do appear uh, in the locals. And that would also appear in the watch window as well. And uh, this is not limited to Visual Studio for Mac. Visual Studio on Windows has had this, this similar support for as long as I can remember as well. Um, so yeah, and, and I, I believe that the Visual Studio team has recently uh, put out a blog about more information for uh, debugger display attribute. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop debugging here. And then, oh no, actually, I'm just going to let, I'm going to let it continue debugging. Uh, what I want to do now is, um, let's, say, let's say in your code, let's say you're running into a situation where there's an exception being thrown somewhere, but you're not sure where it's at, and uh, you're not really sure where to set the breakpoint. So what you can do is go into Run, and then New Breakpoint. And then we can say, uh, you, want to, you want to stop, let's say, when any exception has been thrown. So I went into the Create a Breakpoint. I selected when an exception is thrown. And then I'll pick a system.exception. And then make sure that include subclasses is also checked. So I'll say, go ahead and create that breakpoint. I'm going to go back to the, to the website and perform an operation uh, that I know that uh, is likely to, uh, to throw an exception. I go ahead and continue. All right, I'm going to drill into uh, to a template pack, and then I'm going to change the URL uh, to something that doesn't exist. So I just uh, made like a little change there. So now uh, this should raise an exception in the code. Right, there we go. All right. So now we've got a uh, null reference exception that's being thrown on line 5. Um, what we want to do now is uh, we, we could either do on hover here to inspect this. Um, and in this case, you know, it looks like the model value is fine, but uh, template pack uh, looks like it's probably null. Uh, but one thing we can leverage here, if you, if you didn't want to use the on hover, you could always go into the expression evaluator. And I got to that with the run menu. So I can say model, and then I can do enter to evaluate. Let's see, what's model.template pack? Yeah, so model.template pack is null, and that and we can see that's that's when the exception is being raised because I've got model.template pack.icon URL. So I probably should fix up my code to where it's not going to throw that null reference exception anymore. 
All right, so those are all the uh, debugging tips I have for you today for .NET Core developers and Visual Studio for Mac. One uh, additional tip I have is to check out the docs, which are available at aka.ms slash vsmacdocs. Thank you very much.